Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning to you. Oh, hope the day finds you well. Well, what you're looking at here is the inside guts of a little frequency counter. This is a little BK frequency counter, nothing special. It's a 1601. Or, excuse me, that's almost 1801. One of the benefits of having a precision reference is after you get it lined up, then you can use it to calibrate other pieces of equipment. This is just a basic frequency counter. It's nothing really very special. Matter of fact, I got this at a ham auction, and it was a whole in a box of junk. It was a whole five dollars. Apparently, other hams don't think uh, frequency counters are worth anything. I guess I don't know. Actually, it's got a little problem right there. I don't know if you can see that the the uh, covering is pulling back on that capacitor, which might mean it's running warm, so it probably needs to be replaced. Anyway, after you calibrate your precision reference, you can use it to calibrate other things. And one of the things you can calibrate is frequency oscillators in other pieces of equipment. So what I've done here is I've just hooked this up and actually here's the the whole reading it's 10 megahertz but it's off a few hundreds of a hertz so if you switch the display down it'll overflow the the rest of the display is over here if you imagine that but you can see it's off by about 400 hertz 468 to be exact now let this sit and warm up really good for a while and I'm also using a uh, little probe here it's it's technically an oscilloscope probe but it works just fine for frequency counters and I'm using the times 10 part of it sometimes if you overdrive equipment you'll get false readings so on the side here right here is a little patter cap it's sort of like a variable cap it is a variable cap in fact um, and this adjusts the uh, reference oscillator inside the frequency counter. So what I've done here is I'm measuring the precision oscillator I set up a week ago and since we know that the precision oscillator isn't off or that's the assumption anyway it must be the frequency counter that's out of kilt. So what I was going to do here is uh, adjust this. This is something you could do. Oh here it actually says trim right there on the little oscillator board. So I'm just going to adjust this here and see if we can get this maybe a little bit better. It's pretty loose right now. Well, looks like we made things worse. So there's a cap in parallel with this. There's the trimmer cap there. Right there is a cap that looks like it was tacked in at the factory. You might have to clip that out of circuit. And I just lost my reference. Oh, let's see here. Let's hook it back up. So what are we at? We're at 400 and almost 500 hertz, which is pretty far. Not in the big scheme of things, but it's uh, it's reasonably far off. The other thing you could do is if you can't get your uh, device that you're trying to calibrate up to snuff, you can always make a note of it and kind of mentally determine how far off it is. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just nip that cap out of circuit and see That brings it down. Oh, here we go. We went below 10 megahertz by quite a bit. Now we're
now we're on the other side, and I bet I can't. But that patter cap isn't got enough capacitance to bring it up. We're off the other way. So what I'll have to do is find a little cap to replace. Nope. We're getting close. Maybe just a little more. Yeah, we're about 400 low. So this cap that was in here is just a little ceramic disc cap. It was 82 picofarad. So if I find something between there, I probably can get this back on the road. So I need about, I don't know, probably a value I'll find is 39 picofarad. Actually, we can see the display change when I reach over it and put that back in circuit. I've had. There it's 10 high. There it's low. And we'll have to fix that up. Well, let me get a cap and see if we can fix that up. Well, I've just kind of clipped that old one out. A little digging around in the boxes of junk and found a nice little, this is a little silver mica. It's 51 picofarad. Which ought to be a really nice stable cap to have in there. Silver mica caps are pretty nice little caps. tin the leads on the silver mica a little bit. Just let me just snap it right in there. Maybe a good design would have had a place on the circuit board for a hammer. There we go. Easy enough. So we'll turn the freak counter back on. And keep it from tipping over. And what do we got here? Need to put the reference back there. So by about 500 but now this other cap is all still closed up the little trimmer cap so I can back it out ah now we're getting down there we're off by 31 Hertz that's a lot feels a lot better now doesn't it Where are we at now? Eh, 24 hertz. I think that cap's still going to be just a touch big. Yeah. 23 hertz. Well, I can try again. But you get the general idea. That's what all this is really about. It's a little far cry from being off several hundred hertz is what it was before. The other thing I should do too is I should put the lid back on this, which I will, and let this warm up again. Actually, I took it downstairs and uh, did a little math in my tape measure, and I punched a little hole in the side. That's kind of weird. A lot of these have a hole in the side to do this, this, but this one didn't, so I don't know. Maybe the guy that drilled the holes was sick that day, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. And then I can just that little alignment tool in here you can see that I've taken this alignment tool and I've it's a little body work um, I've coated it with some heat shrink so that when I get it in there it won't ground out on anything ideally you should consult the you know the user service manual about this 
but uh, since I'm feeling lazy and think I know what I'm doing, there we go. Well, I'll just give it a miss. So it looks like ideally I need probably like a 33 picofarad cap. The other thing I could do is I could make what's called a gimmick. Um, it'd take a little bit of work and probably wouldn't be appropriate for this. But uh, if you just need a small value cap and you don't have one, one thing you can do is you can, let's see here, we'll get out the visual aid here. You can take two pieces of wire, this is very exaggerated, you would use some like phone wire or something, it's very skinny, and you would take and you would twist it together in a big long twist like that, and you would clip this end and then solder the two ends in place where your cap needs to be. Since capacitors are just two, two metal plates in parallel, that that twisted up wire would work. It'd be a very small cap, but it would work. And one thing you could do then is, if you make it and it's too long, which is what you want to do, you would trim it down little bits at a time until you got close to where you needed to be. Uh, you see the gimmick cap and a lot of old radios and stuff. So there you go. There's how to kind of roughly calibrate your, uh, at least this frequency counter and how to lose your cap off the top. Like I said, it's not perfect yet, but you get the general idea. Anyway, have a groovy day. Take it easy.